you, Pat, and, and Dr. Syke for including me. And thank you for allowing me to go first to set the bar real low for everybody else that's going to come after me. Um, but as Pat said, I am a service engineer. I'm currently employed by Anton Parr. Uh, Anton Parr is, uh, is owned by a charitable foundation, the Santner Foundation. It's a global company, and they make a, a variety of instruments that are used for all sorts of analysis from food and beverage uh, to asphalt to all sorts of things in between. Uh, but in terms of my career from college up till now, uh, in college, uh, in terms of Beta Chi chapter, I served as the house manager at one point in time, the master of ceremonies, and the master alchemist. Um, and so all of those kind of helped shape who I am today. Hampton Sydney obviously helped shape who I am today, and so that's what we're really going to be talking about. Um, so in terms of what I do, I started out uh, immediately after college. I went to work for a company called Pharmaceutical Product Development in Richmond. It's a pharmaceutical contract company. They're now owned by Thermo Fisher Scientific. That was a great experience because I started out as a bench chemist there, but quickly moved into uh, what's effectively a third-party service group inside of that company. And when I was leaving Hampton, Sydney, I really wanted to get, get into service engineering. Uh, so through the analytical instruments or the um, I, instrumental analysis courses as part of the chemistry degree, uh, I became very interested in that kind of work. Uh, so I had originally applied with a company called Anastasi Instruments. They make NMRs. Uh, didn't get that job, uh, but then it worked out because during my time there at PPD, uh, I got to work on the triple quad mass specs that we had there. And then from there, I was able to get a job as a field service engineer with Shimatsu Scientific Instruments. And Shimatsu is a pretty big, well-known brand in terms of, you know, the, the research instruments, good production instruments. Uh, so I did field service as a generalist for them for three years. Uh, so I had basically worked on anything Shimatsu made. I also found myself in the position where I got to do a lot of uh, specialty applications. So I'm actually a, a certified IQO Q inspector for Frontier Labs pyro Pyrolysis Systems. Um, so that was a pretty cool thing that I got to do as part of, part of my experience at Shimatsu. After about three years, I was then promoted to a mass spec service specialist. So I focused uh, primarily on the installation maintenance and repair of the mass spec systems that uh, Shimatsu was, was putting out. And during my time there, uh, they, they released the ICPMS for sale in the United States, and that was really a big deal because Japan has a lot of nuclear restrictions, uh, obviously because World War II happened, and then uh, the company itself had a lot of nuclear restrictions as well. So they couldn't just let these things out, and the information was pretty limited about that. Uh, so I got to work with the Japanese product engineer, Mr. Oho. Uh, so Oho's son uh, came over and he took pictures of my mustache and he told me how to fix these ICP and messes. So that was a very interesting, interesting situation. But after over six years of doing that and a lot of travel, uh, my family uh, situation changed. You see my kids and my wife over there. Sarah is also, uh, she was part of the Beta Chi colony before they were Gamma Chi uh, during our time in college. But Family situation changed, and so I made the move to Anton Parr. Uh, and so now I'm an in-house service engineer. I do still travel occasionally for work, but usually it's a big emergency. Like yesterday, I had to run down uh, to Asheville, North Carolina, to Sierra Nevada, and help with an installation of a couple pieces of equipment that are new. Uh, so it's a very interesting uh, career path to go after. So you might not think about what analytical instruments are used for. But you can use it for anything from the small home brewer all the way up to the Department of Defense. When I worked for Shimatsu, I was involved in some big projects for the Department of Defense and doing uh, basically air, what would effectively be air quality analysis. And basically they were just looking to tell the story of what had happened should something have happened. Uh, so that was a pretty interesting part of that career there. But in terms of how Hampton Sydney and, and Alpha Chi Sigma uh, shape that, I'd say it comes down to three big points. Uh, the first one is, is the liberal arts education. Okay, you cannot be static and so focused uh, in the education here 
that you know you can just stay in one lane you don't get to veer out at all and when you're a service engineer you don't get to stay in one lane you have many many hats that you have to wear okay so you have to be able to fix a box okay all an instrument is is a box with parts in it you figure out what parts bad you put the new part in and it works okay you're a quarter of the way through what you've got to do as a service engineer all right then you also have to make sure that everything's plumbed right check the electricity for the the customer's lab because often especially on on uh, 200 volt instruments it's not right so you have to be able to communicate that with the customer you have to plumb gas lines you have to make sure that they're leak tight and then you have to fix the customer and that's the hardest part of the job okay you can have a beautifully running instrument we actually have this case right now we've got an instrument in from the customer they have paid for an, a, an advanced level of certification on that calibration and they're saying this unit has never worked from day one well that's kind of hard to say because we have the calibration records for that unit from when we installed it. We know that it's worked because they actually paid extra to have an extra calibration done and we have the proof. But yet the customer still thinks that it's not really working right so we're working through that. We're working on fixing the customer. And so the liberal arts education really shapes that because you don't just get to take uh, chemistry classes or physics classes you have to take logic and you have to or not logic but philosophy you could take logic I guess um, but you have to take a variety of classes and it really helps shape you and mold you and, and really makes you flexible my hardest class here was creative writing fiction with dr. Susan Robbins and I love her dearly she's amazing but that was by far the hardest class because basically every class you'd walk in you'd open up your short story that you've written and you, you read maybe two, three sentences, and Dr. Robbins would be like, Mr. Cook, start over. <laughs> and that's a lot of what service engineering is like. You run into a bump, you start over, and you pick it back up. So the liberal arts education. Uh, the second big point, or shaping factor, I would say what Dr. Anderson would always call pre-frustration. Okay? When you're pre-frustrated, <laughs> In a, in a controlled environment, you can learn from that. Uh, you, you don't learn so well when you have this big problem and a huge stressor standing behind you. There's nothing like a customer coming over and saying, uh, I need to run my samples. When's that gonna be done? So pre-frustration, you, you run into a problem, you've gotta find a solution for yourself. The answers aren't necessarily right there in front of you. So you have to dig a little bit. And because of that pre-frustration, you learn critical thinking, critical analysis, problem solving. All of those are key for a service engineer. You really have to be able to look at a, at a problem because often what's gonna be described to you is a symptom. And it could be as vague as, hey, my thing doesn't work. I've literally heard that from the mouths of customers. It's the most infuriating thing. My thing doesn't work. Okay, could you tell me what your thing is and then we can figure out why it's not working. All right, so these are, these are the, the conversations or the, the things that come up. And by being pre-frustrated, uh, you learn to, to, to work around those. You learn to be flexible again, okay? And you learn to ask questions and you learn to get down to the root of the problem. So pre-frustration would be the second big point there. And then finally, I'd say the biggest thing about the, the whole educational experience in my time uh, here for four years was being able to fail gently, okay? Being able to make mistakes in a, in a low-stress, low-risk environment and learn from them. You learn best, in my opinion, when you make a mistake. Uh, when you go in and you break an $8,000 board on a piece of equipment, uh, it's pretty embarrassing, okay? Uh, I've done that, <laughs> but I've only done it once, okay? So when you make a mistake, you can really learn from it. And you learn even better when there's a community around you that's supporting you and helping to encourage you to grow. And so and just in terms of uh, how Hampton Sydney Alpha Chi Sigma shaped me to be who I am today, uh, that, that's kind of it. So... There's my, my, my big spiel. I'm better at answering questions, so if you have any questions, uh, I'll take your questions now. <laughs>